the day before tomorrow. Filled with promise and grace, tomorrow born today in mind and space. What will happen and to whom? Tomorrow such a happy bride and groom. When you don't know what to expect, you can live with tomorrow a tiny speck. On the horizon of life, you can never know of this double-edged knife. Swinging to and fro, tomorrow may come or it may go. With grief and glee you plunge ahead, tomorrow may find you alive or dead. With hope and a deep breath, tomorrow will be, in spite of the death, come one, come all, some to answer the sound of the call. When tomorrow comes, and it will, find you at might, moving or still. Tomorrow's the day, today's one too. Live in the now, whatever else you do. Live, don't wait. Today's the day, tomorrow may be too late. Come see the sun high above the gray. Today is here, tomorrow a day away. The day before tomorrow is the best. Don't beg or borrow or on yesterday rest. Be here, be here now. The day before tomorrow is all you're allowed. Today is the day before 9-11 remembered, and it's the day before tomorrow. It's the day before the world stopped turning for thousands, and the day our lives changed forever, collectively, individually. So today's theme of On Top of the World Radio is the day before tomorrow, and may it find you well. Well, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. There ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA And you are listening to On Top of the World Radio. Mr. David Becker is your engineer today and producer all the way back up of the mothership, which he founded, formed, and created back in 19... 19- 1979 with nothing more than a couple of paper clips, some tin foil, and a whole lot of heart and will, and a little bit of intellect. That is KUTL and KPEN FM and AM. Thank you to Mr. David Becker. Also, want to thank Horizon Satellite, Horizon Wireless. They help us bring this program about every week, as well as our sister program, Radio Realty. 226 3130. 226 3130. If you want, only call them. Here's the thing. Don't call. Do No, 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 no. Don't call Horizon Satellite unless you want the best wireless internet. And then you should call 226-3130. If you want something substandard, don't call them. If you want the best, you'll call Horizon Satellite, 226-3130. Many of us grew up with, listened to, were maybe peers of the Voice of America, Paul Harvey. Absolutely love his work. I grew up listening to Paul Harvey. Grow up with, when I say listening, I don't mean in the background. When Paul Harvey took to the radio, you listen. Now, Americans, the problem is less acute today than it has been. We're on the right track right now. But if we sit down on that track, I'm afraid we're going to get run over. We tell our young people how our country was carved out of the wilderness. (laughs) No, it wasn't. Our nation was not carved out of the wilderness. Our nation was hammered and hoed and chopped and dug and sawed and clawed out of the wilderness by barehanded men who asked nothing for nothing. America did not start out with an agricultural production that's the awe and envy of the world. It was seeded first by sod-busting farmers who fought Indians and ranchers and cold and heat and drought and bugs and flood and one another. 
the fruited plain sprang forth from barren acres only after they had been watered with a lot of sweat. I guess what I'm saying is that the more history I study, ours and others, the more certain I am that there is one fertilizer essential to the survival of civilization, and that fertilizer is sweat. And I don't mean perspiration. I mean the kind of steamy, streamy, salty sweat that's wrung from a man by hard physical work. Somehow, the sweat gets into the soil of a farm or a factory or a city or a state or a nation, and everything thereabouts grows tall and strong and tough enough to stand against any storm. But the day the sweat dries up, the soil dries up. And whole civilizations are buried in dust. Not this one. United States of America, we faced a storm on 9-11, 2001. We faced a storm, and we overcame. We over, have overcome. There is a price, though, that some continue to pay, and the cost that can never be repaid. You are listening to On Top of the World Radio today, the day before tomorrow. Theme of our program, the day before tomorrow. Question for you is, where were you the day before tomorrow? Where were you on September 10th, 2001? So the day before tomorrow, the day before you knew, the day before you woke up and saw the Twin Towers imploding, the day before you heard the horrific stories of what was happening to our country, Where were you, and to our countrymen and women, where were you and what were you doing? What did you have planned for tomorrow? Do you remember? We think a lot about what were we doing on the day of 9-11. This program falling today on the day before tomorrow made me think, what was I doing the day before? What did I think? What did I know? What, What was the landscape of the world the day before everything changed? What was possible? What I thought would never be possible? in my country. Before that happened, that day before, what was I doing? Share any story you'd like. We'd love to hear from you at 299-7653. If you're impelled to leave a voicemail, that's fine. If you'd like to text it in, that's faster. 299-7653. The day before, where were you? Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? Were you in the yard with your wife and children or working on some stage in L.A.? Did you stand there in shock at the sight of that black smoke rising against that blue sky? Did you shout out in anger and fear for your neighbor or did you just sit down and cry Did you weep for the children who lost their dear loved ones pray for the ones who don't know Did you rejoice for the people who walked from the rubble and sob for the ones left below Did you burst out with pride for the red, white and blue and the heroes who died just doing what they do Did you look up to heaven for some kind of answer And look at yourself and what really matters I'm just a singer of simple songs I'm not a real political man I watch CNN but I'm not sure I can tell you The difference in Iraq and Iran But I know Jesus Talk to God And I remember this from when I was young Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us And the greatest is love You are listening to On Top of the World Radio The day before tomorrow When we return I want to share a story of evil 
unusual for this program. We are the program of all things possible and prosperous. Today I do have a short story about the birth of evil. We also have your Alaskan mind bender and 9-11 remembered. Never forget all that and more coming up here from on top of the world. Did you call up your mother and tell her you loved her? Did you dust off that Bible at home? Did you open your eyes and hope it never happened? Close your eyes and not go to sleep. Did you notice the sunset the first time in ages to speak to some stranger on the street? Did you lay down at night Think of tomorrow Go out and buy you a gun Did you turn off that violent old movie you're watching And turn on I Love Lucy reruns Did you go to a church and hold hands with some strangers Stand in line and give your own blood Did you just stay home and cling tight to your family Thank God you had somebody to love I'm just a singer of simple songs I'm not a real political man I watch CNN but I'm not sure I can tell you The difference in our rock and our ring But I know Jesus and I talk to God And I remember this from when I was young Faith, hope, and love are some good things he gave us, and the greatest is love. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio, the day before tomorrow. A very special episode, 9-11, we'll never forget. Ray said he was out on a boat in the Gulf of Mexico, second or a, a mate on, the, on a boat, a, a survey vessel out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, that fateful day, which was the day before tomorrow, September 10th. 2001. Where were you at 299-7653? 299-7653. Where were you? We'd love to know. We talk about all the time where we were on the day of 9-11. It's just ingrained in your mind. I'm saying rewind to the day before. Where were you? What were you doing? Imagine a world before 9-11. Imagine a world that you lived in before 9-11. And I, I... Remember distinctly a conversation I had. I was driving past a elementary school one day, and I had this notion. This is a few years ago. So it's, yeah, it's been several years ago. And I thought every child in that school knows nothing but a world post 9 11. They know nothing of a world prior to 9 11, what it was like. They know nothing about a country at peace. All they know is a country at constant war. And I called an episode we did with Pastor Jonathan Walker, inner, War and Inner Peace. How do you find inner peace when you're constantly at war? Something to think about. I like what he had to say. He brought a lot of um, relief to the mind. Might get Jonathan Walker back on the program one of these days. It's time for your Alaskan mind bender. By the way, you can text in any time at 299-7653. 299-7653. want to hear from you. A little bit later in the program story about evil, when just pure evil is born into the world, what does it look like? And, and how can this happen? How, how can somebody just be evil? How does that occur? It's time now for your Alaskan Mind Bender, presented by Bl- Captain's Coffee, Coffee Roaster, the original coffee roaster in Homer, Alaska. According to a um, recent study, this is a true or false question. And I've got three right here, three coffee cards. I'm going to give them away. Three coffee cards for Captain's Coffee. And I want you to pay attention, get your phone finger flexed and ready to dial. Text in 2997653. It's a true or false question. According to a study by the Journal of Pain, two cups of coffee can cut post-workout muscle pain by up to 48%. Is that a true statement or a false statement? Two cups of coffee, according to a study by the Journal of Pain, can cut post-workout muscle pain, muscle pain, by up to 48%. True or false? What do you think? At 
7653. It's the day before tomorrow. We are remembering September 10th, the day before September 11th, 2001, and thinking in terms of the cost today that the day after would leave, and the cost on those that are left behind, the cost on those who maybe were even too young to, to be quite aware of what was happening. It's been a year, Daddy. I really, really miss you. Mommy says you're safe now in a beautiful place called heaven. Three hundred and forty three firefighters were lost September eleventh, thirty seven police officers from the Port Authority, twenty three police officers from the New York City Police Department, and eight emergency medical technicians and a patrolman from the New York Fire Patrol were among the two thousand nine hundred and seventy seven victims on September eleventh.
You're listening to On Top of the World Radio the day before tomorrow. We'll be back with How Do You Get to Know People and a short story, Born to Evil, here on Top of the World. Stick around. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio, our very special The Day Before Tomorrow episode. Wanting to hear where were you on September 10th, 2001, the day before everything changed, the day before 9-11. Can you imagine that world today? Do you remember it? Do you remember flying before? Just the little inconveniences, the little, the little things that we put up with now that we couldn't imagine pre-Patriot Act, we couldn't imagine pre-9-11. Um, naked scanners, the whole nine. You, you just can't even, it's like, oh yeah, there was another world. And then you listen to that song, I Miss You Daddy, and you realize, oh, there's this whole other perspective if your life wasn't directly impacted with the loss of a loved one in the tower or in a plane or on the ground. Responders, the first responders that run, don't walk, don't dilly-daddle, literally run to the danger, literally run into and up a burning building to get people out. The people that were affected that day in that capacity with loss or injury live with it every, every minute of every day. We remember 9-11. What about the day before? Where were you? 2997-653. Also on this very special edition, we have an Alaskan mind bender presented by Captain's Coffee, the original coffee roaster in Homer, going all the way back to the early 90s. Just so fantastic on Pioneer Avenue. Check it out. You can also buy a bag of freshly roasted coffee, take it home, roast yourself, Captain's Coffee every day. According to a study by the Journal of Pain, two cups of coffee can cut your post-workout muscle pain by nearly half, up to 48%. Is that a true or a false statement? 299-7653. Born to evil. Tommy took the last bite of his tuna fish sandwich 10 minutes before he watched his little brother drown. Don't let him out of your sight, Tommy, his mother shouted at him from the car, a cloud of smoke billowed out the partially opened passenger window. Grace and her husband, Lee, were smoking medical marijuana before there was such a term. Lee never cared for his stepson, Tommy, but he came with the Grace. It was a package deal. Within a few months of getting married, Grace became pregnant with Kenny. Tommy never cared for Kenny or Lee. In the world of stepdads, Lee wasn't the worst, but he was pretty darn close. In front of Grace, he did put on a good show. Tough loved is what he called it. The second her back was turned, though, or she left the room, he would flick Tommy on the forehead or trip him as he passed by his lazy boy. Watch it, clumsy! Then he'd whisper through a tight smile as he pretended to help his stepson to his feet. Come on, Tommy, let's play hide-and-seek, said Kenny. He gushed at his older brother. Kenny thought the world of Tommy. Well, go hide them, dummy! I'll come and find you, Tommy hissed while shoving his little brother down the trail at the edge of the lake. Kenny smiled up at his brother. No peeking. Close your eyes. Whatever. Just scram, you little stain. Kenny raced down the gravel trail, ducked into the woods out of sight. Tommy stood at the edge of the lake and watched a pair of swans. They slid across the placid water effortlessly. A small, downy, gray signet close behind. Tommy wished he was out there with them happily floating along with his parents that loved him, wanted him, didn't hurt him. He knew his mother had loved him once, but ever since Lee came into the picture, things were different. She was different, and so was Tommy. He felt an anger inside of himself all the time. He wasn't even sure why. He rarely let it out, except with Kenny. Tommy realized he'd given Kenny enough time to hide, He hollered, ready or not, here I come. He followed the gravel trail to where he'd seen his little brother veer off into the woods. He wandered through the undergrowth till he came back to the edge of the lake. Kenny was nowhere in sight. Then Tommy heard something. Someone calling from the water. It was Kenny. He had shimmied out to the end of a log jutting into the water. Tommy, help me. I I can't make it back, Kenny pleaded, his eyes wide with fear. Tommy didn't respond and He didn't move. Please, Tommy, I'm scared. Tommy stared at him. 
Kenny's arms were wrapped around a skinny branch sticking up into the air. The log was slick with dew, and he was clinging to it with his legs, his feet touching the water. Tommy watched. Tommy, come get me, please. No, you got out there yourself. Now get back and hurry up, because Lee's going to skin you alive. Tears were streaking down Kenny's face. He was petrified. His older brother was just watching. That made him even have a sense of safety, though. Kenny thought, I can do this. He began to make a move towards shore. Then he thought again, please, Tommy, I can't. Please, just come and help me. Help me, please. He pleaded one more time. Nope, is all Tommy said. Kenny released the branch and started to move back towards shore. His dad had warned them both, don't go into the water because it gets deep fast. Hurry up, Tommy yelled. He didn't want to be the one to have to pay, and he knew if Lee saw this, he'd smack Tommy upside the head and say, Your mama said to watch him, dummy. This is your fault. Kenny made a few feet progress and then stopped, locked his eyes on Tommy, and then slipped into the water. Tommy smiled, thinking of those graceful swans. Kenny thrashed. His arms were thrashing at the log, He couldn't get a grip. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio. Christopher Story here along with Mr. David Becker. It's a short story called Born to Evil. We'll conclude that story a little bit later in the show. But right now, I want to go to the text messages and find out where you're at. Looks like true. This is the Alaskan Mindbender question that is uh, asking, according to a recent study of the Journal of Pain, two cups of coffee can cut post-workout muscle pain by up to 48%. Is that true or false? Robbie says it's true. Coffee cures everything. Robbie, that's an interesting uh, take on it. Ray Dawson says, I will guess false. Let's see here. Lots of stuff. Well, here we go. Let's, this is to the uh, question of what were you doing on September 10th. This is such a good question for all of us to contemplate. On the day before September 11, 2001, I was home starting our second week of homeschooling. My children were then 6, 10, and 12. We always, always started our day with a prayer, singing and reading a portion of the Bible. Looking back, I wouldn't have changed a thing on what I was doing. The following day after I watched the horror, the assault on our nation that took place, we took time off of our regular scheduled routine to talk about the events of the day and to pray for those who were hurting. I'd lost my husband in an accident in 1995, so my heart was feeling for and hurting deeply for those who lost lost loved, loved ones on that horrific day. May we never forget, may never we take, may we never take one day for granted, or one another for granted. Each day is a gift from God. i 
On top of the world radio, the day before tomorrow. When we return, motivational moment brought to you by Alaska Ultima Safaris.com and the continuation of the short story Born to Evil here on Top of the World. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio, the day before tomorrow. I'm Chris Story, your host for All Things Possible and prosperous. Everything is here for you. Everything you want to do in this life, you can do. Remember, be careful about what it is you say you want because that's what you'll get. And uh, sometimes we're not very clear about that, but we will get it. So be careful, and whatever you've got is exactly what you want. That's a tough pill to swallow. You're listening to what my mom calls the greatest show on earth. We want to know where you were the day before tomorrow. What were you doing on September 10th? It's a day that uh, doesn't really live in our memory, does it? I remember exactly where I was when I heard that the, uh, the 9-11 had happened. I knew exactly what I was doing. I, I can tell you to the minute just exactly what I was doing. But the day before, it's a struggle. I know I was making pottery in my studio, um, enjoying the love of my daughters, Ashley and Zoe, who were very young at the time. They had an in-home studio. So my day would have been, just naturally, it would have been a stay-at-home uh, work, make pots to prepare for our Christmas shows coming up. The Mean Alaska Festival would have been coming up in October. So I'd have been making all kinds of halibut for that program, that show. And um, probably just happy as a lark, happy as a pig in poop, didn't know what was coming. And it's a, it's a different world than what we live in today. Continuation of our story, Born to Evil. Kenny is thrashing in the water. Tommy is watching. Mom and Lee are smoking dope in a car nearby. We continue. Kenny thrashed his arms at the log. He couldn't get a grip. His head slipped before the surf below the surface. Then he rose back up one more time, trying in vain to grasp the log. He slipped beneath the water, leaving a small ripple that spread out across the surface of the lake into infinity. Tommy watched. He didn't make a move towards his little brother who was in peril. A moment later, he saw his brother again. He floated to the surface, his back to the sky. His small head remained in the water. His lifeless body just floated peacefully, like the swans, Tommy thought. He watched his little brother's body come to rest against the side of the wet log. He smiled. A sense of calm washed over Tommy. He was free of a weight he didn't know he was carrying. Tommy! Lee called from the edge of the trail. Where are you two? Tommy didn't speak a word. He stood there, watching Kenny. Kenny! Kenny, where are you, baby? Grace joined in the search. A twig snapped behind Tommy. He swung his head around to see Lee coming at him. Lee grabbed his arm, twisted it behind his back. Tommy stayed silent. Where's your brother? Where is he? Lee punctuated each word with a tight squeeze. Grace followed Lee into the clearing at the edge of the lake. She stood looking at Tommy. She knew something was wrong. Tommy turned his head slowly back to the water. He stared at his dead brother, his lips curling into a faint smile. Lee and Grace turned their heads in unison to see what Tommy was looking at. No, 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 Grace screamed. Kenny! Lee hollered as he released Tommy and ran for the edge of the lake. He dove in and swam to his son. Too late. Tommy knew that. He'd watched his little brother take his last and final breath. Grace fell to the ground and clutched at her face as Lee carried Kenny's lifeless body out of the water. He set him down with a gentleness that he'd never afforded Tommy. Grace crawled to her little boy. She cradled his head in her arms and stroked his cheeks. Kenny, Kenny, it's mama, baby. Grace whimpered. She looked at Lee, her eyes pleading, do something, Lee, do something. He's gone, Grace. Nothing can be done. Then Lee stood. He 
turned towards Tommy, who still had the evidence of a smile on his face. Lee leapt at him, launching his six-foot frame at his stepson, landing on Tommy. They both fell to the ground. Lee came up fast and pushed Tommy's shoulders flat to the earth. He reared back with his right hand, holding him firmly with his left. He smashed his fist into Tommy's face over and over again. Tommy's face started bleeding from his nose and eyes, cuts on his forehead. Lee was intent on killing him. He only stopped the beating when his arm was fatigued. He was cold and wet from the lake, his body shivering. He convulsed and fell off of Tommy. Grace continued to wail, No, no, Kenny, my precious baby. Come back to Mama Kenny. The last thing Tommy saw before he lost consciousness was Lee's face and one last punch that knocked him out. When Tommy woke, he was in the hospital bed. A pretty woman in a gray pants suit was sitting beside him. She promised Tommy no one would hurt him again, ever. Lee was sentenced to five years for the beating of his stepson, eligible for parole in two. Grace was committed to a psychiatric ward for her own protection. After a few weeks, they took her off of suicide watch. The next day, she hung herself with a noose fashioned out of strips of cloth she'd cut. Tommy was placed in foster care, given a new name, new family, and a fresh start, a new life. Even still, when he closed his eyes there before him in the movie house of his mind, his brother's lifeless body would float by and bump into that log, and the edges of Tommy's lips would curl up into the beginnings of a smile that would lie there stillborn upon his face. Evil born is evil without explanation. Even still, it's a wonderful world. Trees of green and red roses too. I watched them bloom for me and you and I think to myself. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio the day before tomorrow. We are honoring those who today had no clue what tomorrow would hold, found themselves in the face of certain death, in some cases heroism in others, and a combination thereof for some. It's with a heavy heart that we think every single September 11th of those who fell, of those who then would subsequent to that answer the call of duty, and they themselves give their life in the pursuit of our freedoms, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have this world any other way than as it is. It's just, it's not for you and me to determine exactly what will happen, but we must enjoy today. We must remember those in our lives today. We must never give up our faith. We must never give up in the face of terrible tragedy, you can find story after story of those who sacrifice, those who give of themselves 
and those who are honorable, noble in the world truly is 85% amazing and wonderful. Let us not live our lives focused on the 15% that would do harm. It's a very small minority. We can never turn our back on them. And we've got to stand together, circle the wagons, and not fire within, but always guarding against those who would love to see us destroy ourselves. God bless America. It's 54 minutes after 1 o'clock. You're listening to On Top of the World Radio. Quick message from DOT. They would love for you in the Homer area to avoid the bypass in Main Street as today's paving day. So how about just go up and around Pioneer? It's time for TBC Radio's Word. The first and last word in radio. TBC Radio brings you the word of the week. You can call TBC at 803-9424. Our word today comes courtesy of Mr. David Webb. And that word is blatherskite. Blatherskite, B-L-A-T-H-E-R-S-K-I-T-E, meaning nonsense. Or a blatherskite person might be somebody who speaks nonsense. It's from a mid-17th century uh, Scots derogatory term adopted in American colloquial speech during world uh, the War of Independence from the Scottish song Maggie Lauder. And apparently this was made popular to American troops during World War I. Blatherskite. I think we just shorten it to blather. Congratulations to Robbie, Mark, and Chris. All three of you are going to Captain's Coffee Roasters for free here at Homer. Come down to the corner of West Hill and the Sterling Highway. Story Productions and Story Real Estate have got your coffee cards here for you. Come down and collect those because, in fact, you did know that, yes, two cups of coffee can cut your post-workout muscle pain by up to 48%. And I think it was Chris who pointed out that as a diuretic, it would help uh, with blood flow. I think, to be fair, Paul had mentioned the same thing. But uh, Robbie, Mark, and Chris, you are all three selected to go to Captain's Coffee absolutely free. Come down here and pick up your winnings. I wanted to talk about something how to know the people you don't know. But I think we'll postpone that for Radio Realty. I do hope you tune in for Radio Realty. It's on Thursdays from 1 to 2 o'clock. Might even be um, talking to some folks about the upcoming documentaries. Somebody who I'd brought to your attention years ago, several years ago, was on a, uh, an edition of our program called Back to Butter. Her book by the same name, Back to Butter, Molly Chester. I've interviewed her several times in an uh, Anchorage format, but also here that um, you would have heard. You might remember her. She's fantastic. Her husband's a filmmaker. They've made a film about their life, and that'll be coming up on Thursday. That's the opening to the film document, uh, Doc Film Festival here in Homer, uh, which is cool. It's gaining a lot of momentum, so we might have somebody from the Homer Theater here on Thursday during Radio Realty. So where were you? I guess just keep thinking about that. Where were you the day before tomorrow when the world changed? It changed for all of us, but I think that... I think that we're essentially, it's like they say about money. Money makes you just more of who you already are. You can give somebody a million dollars, but if they're poor, if they're a poor mindset, they're going to be poor soon. Jim Rohn always said, if I give you a million dollars, you better hurry up and become a millionaire. I think if you give somebody a lot of money and they're greedy, they're going to be more greedy. I think if you give somebody a lot of money and they're generous, they're going to be con continue to be generous. I think that's a continuation post 9-11 that uh, it may have amplified some of us in our feelings towards uh, this country. But I think by and large, no scientific proof here, but this is anecdotally speaking and just my own personal views on it. I think that we are 85% largely a patriotic country in spite of party affiliation, which would have you say it's 50-50 uh, split on everything. I think when it comes to patriotism, we're 85-15. And those 15% are protected, constitutionally protected, to have their anti-American sentiments protected because that's who we are. Celebrate tomorrow. Love who is in your life to love. Give everybody you meet a smile. Have a little more patience with each other. And remember, you, and I do mean you, were born on purpose and you were born with a purpose. 
and I hope that you're living it. For David Becker and myself, I'm Chris Story, wishing you a great day. And remember, 9-11 is tomorrow. And that's something to share with your family and friends and, and people that you love in your life. Wishing you all the best. If tomorrow all the things were gone I'd work for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away Today, cause there ain't no doubt.